In this video, you are going to learn how I make the most out of a very simple lighting design for worship. We're gonna start with a rundown of our lighting system, my techniques for how I use color and movement techniques to dynamically and dramatically enhance mood, and finally, I'll hop behind my computer and demonstrate exactly how I implement my philosophy on lighting. Coming up. My name is Ashton Turner with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. For a complete rundown of all the lighting gear and software we use at our church, download our worship ministry toolkit, which is going to be linked down below this video. And what does the lighting rig look like at your church, and what tips do you have for worship lighting design? Please let us know down below in the comments. We always love learning from you guys. So at Mission Lakewood, our setup and teardown church, our lighting rig may seem a bit elementary, with four trusses that have two LED washes and one LED warmer each, we don't have a super expensive or fancy setup. Our front of stage trusses also each feature one ellipsoidal spotlight, and we use the room lights in the high school we meet in as our house lights, all of which are on a dimmer system. And then to emphasize some of the lights effect, we do use a haze machine to give our lights a spectral and present effect. And then finally, the icing on the cake is our custom screen that we got from Carl's Place, which, believe it or not, is a major part of our lighting setup. And that's it. Following the three-point lighting technique, we are able to use 12 total LEDs and two ellipsoidals to achieve everything we need our lights to do. We don't have any movers, we don't have an LED wall, and this setup is super easy on the budget, and we set it up and tear it down every single week. Let me show you a little bit of what it is capable of. <sighs> cool, right? A very simple lighting setup that can command the feel of the entire room. Now, we use a Mac-based software called LightKey to control all of our lights, and the simple techniques that I'm about to show you can be implemented with any lighting software or analog control. I'm simply going to demonstrate it through LightKey. Really, the most important thing about lighting design is dynamics. My first technique in making the most of any lighting design, simple or stadium level advanced, is to pay attention to your dynamics. It is crucial. The lights have to match the mood, energy, and theme of the song. And if you do this right, you are going to have a very powerful lighting rig. But if you do it wrong, you're going to cause major distractions. So let's take a look at the dynamics of a popular worship song right now, Another in the Fire. The song starts with two slow verses and chorus, then slowly builds into a heavier second chorus and bridge, a breakdown for the bridge, then a lot of energy for the last chorus and bridge, and then finally it breaks down a final time for an end tag. And then also it's important to consider the theme of the song. Another in the Fire emphasizes the truth that God is with us even in the fire, and that he brings peace when we are in the storm. So red hues are an obvious way to emphasize the theme of fire, and white hues are a way to support themes of peace, triumph, and victory. Understanding where a song goes dynamically and thematically is the first and most important key to building good lighting design. Now, LightKey has the ability to add effects to our lights that create movement and a lot of options for dynamic progressions, but before I ever started adding movement to my lighting scenes, I only used basic color changes to aid the song dynamically. So I'm here behind my computer in light key to demonstrate what I mean. So if we take another look at another in the fire, I would go to my truss warmers and when the song starts, I would have the truss warmers just on red. Again, the song is building to this idea that both dynamically and thematically that Jesus is in the fire with us. So then in the first chorus, as it continues to build, I would use an all red scene. There is another in the fire. So I would use all red to kind of add to that point. And then as the song continues to build, I would use my red and white scene, bringing a little more energy as the song builds, but I'm also using white because it also fits thematically. Then for the first breakdown, I would go back again to my red truss scene and the band lights should have been on this whole time. When it breaks down, I would make sure that the band lights turn off. And then after that breakdown, the song gets big again. So I would probably use a red and white scene. And then for the final chorus, final bridge, I'd probably go to an all white scene to really 
really emphasize the joy that comes with every battle. And then finally, after that final big energy of the song, it breaks down again and I would go back to my red trusses again after the song is done, making sure my spotlights black out. And another thing that's important to note here is that I would be sure to use a red background for our song slides to further emphasize the mood and feel of the song. So that's my first technique and just a really quick case study of a specific song, but many worship songs follow a very similar dynamic pattern. And if you only take one thing away from this, it's that you need to pay special attention to the energy of your lights compared to the energy of the song, and then also the color of your lights compared compared to the theme of the song. No matter how big or small your lighting setup is, your lights will be distracting if you do not match the energy of the song. And again, many worship songs do follow a similar pattern of dynamic building and breaking down, so I just match my lights to that pattern and just paying very close attention to the color that I am using. So light design on a song like Only King Forever would rely heavily on the color purple, and a different song, Build My Life, would also probably rely on the red and white colors. This brings me to my second second technique, and that is emotional shepherding. As a lighting designer, you are an emotional shepherd. And what I mean by this is that you are responsible for crafting the external environment that will have an internal impact on the congregation. And I'll show you two examples of this to illustrate what I mean. Take a look at this lighting scene I used in Sales, a new song we just introduced to our church. The song builds very slowly, but it goes into a final bridge that has a lot of energy. So I added a movement scene right here. And <laughs> well, it's pretty distracting, right? Blue is a reflective color, and it also matches the imagery of the song with the sails of your heart invoking oceanic images. But this movement scene was super distracting. Now, it may not have a huge impact, but I really do think it does. For people worshiping in the congregation, I was shepherding them away from reflection rather than into it. But let's take a look at a different song we did on Sunday, What a Beautiful Name. For the instrumental breakdown of this song, I had all of the lights turn off except the truss warmers. So none of the attention is on anybody that's on stage and the congregation is pulled into a moment of reflection. Both of our worship leaders are able to ad lib and sing as they please. And then as we go into the bridge, the lights come on, not a full movement scene yet, but all the lights come on to really emphasize that build going right into the bridge. And then after the bridge, you can see here going into the chorus that we have a movement scene. And again, this is just progressing with the way that the song progresses. And I think I did a lot better job of this song than I did with Sales because it is not distracting it is conducive to the environment the song is trying to build. Lights and music cause people to feel things. There is no denying that. And using lights as a way to shepherd people into certain feelings rather than away from them is a crucial part of lighting design. So during a blackout, a member of the congregation might start thinking about the football game coming after service. You can't really force anyone to feel anything, but you can help to curate an environment that is much more conducive to immersive and excellent worship. You want the congregation to engage more, so create an environment they can engage best in through emotional shepherding. So with philosophy of lighting out of the way, let me give you a more hands-on demo of how I make the most out of our simple lighting design using my third technique, harnessing the power of Ableton Live and automation. Everything we've talked about can be done without automation, sure, but Ableton Live takes our simple lighting rig to the next level. All these builds and dynamic changes and energy and all of the philosophy I have talked about is compounded exponentially with automation. Everything happens exactly on the downbeat and exactly when I want it to. And you can sync the tempo of each song to light key so that movement scenes happen with the beat of the song. So here is an example from Only King Forever. So this song is a perfect example of how powerful automation is. The countdown is just ending and you'll see here on the first downbeat. All of our truss warmers are screened. They all turn on at the same time because they're queued up in Ableton Live. If we fast forward a little bit to the end of this intro, all of the purple lights come on. Jake starts welcoming people into worship. And as we get into the end of the first verse, going into the chorus, the lights turn off there and then everything comes back on. Again, just emphasizing the energy of the song. Here's the end of the chorus and the first instrumental breakdown. And we're gonna go to the end of the second chorus here. 
you'll see all of the lights turn off. They stay off. The purple trusses are flashing on beat because the tempo, again, is synced. And then finally, at the very end here, as we go into the bridge from this breakdown, little lightning scene and then all of the lights turn white the background actually changes to white as well so as you can see ableton really does make our lighting seamless especially for the beginning and end of songs when everything blacks out and the lights and screen come up on the first beat of the next song again all with the effort to keep dynamics in the forefront and distractions at a minimum automation is extremely powerful but it's the tempo syncing that really makes our minimal lighting setup shine. In Lightkey, there are a lot of different movement scenes and a million different ways to change and control these scenes. So in the effects browser, there are so many different things you can do. So you can see here a lot of our different movement scenes that I have set up in Lightkey. Now, if I go to edit this and I go to my effects panel, there are so many different things that I can do. So I can adjust the duration of the effect. I can adjust the beat multiplier, making it faster, makes the lights go faster. And if I multiply it, it makes them go slower. You can change the shape. Um, so right now it's going at a bump. So you can see that first, that first light is coming up and then it's turning off, right? Coming up, turning off, it's coming up and turning off. So if I did something like a square, it's gonna make the lights stay on and then it's gonna turn them off right there. So you can see it's not quite as flowy, it's more on, off, on, off, on, off. And I really like to mess around with these different shapes a lot depending on what song I'm designing lights for. And then you can also mess with the divider. So if I do two, it's going on and off twice in the same amount of time as before or three or four or five or six, you know, it starts to get a little bit excessive at that point. And then the last thing you can do is you can mess with the fixture order. So I can have the lights go from left to right and go around like that. So when I design the lights each week, I combine all of these techniques to make some pretty awesome lighting scenes. So as you can see here, these movement scenes that I have set up, this white movement scene that we just kind of built, I've got a blue movement scene that's a little bit more slow and flowy. My purple movement scene flashes. And I also have some flashing scenes and some lightning scenes as well. So every single week, I listen to each song really closely. I pick the colors I want to use, and then I very intentionally pick different static and dynamic scenes and effects that follow the flow of the song. And then with that, Ableton makes everything come in on the down beat and the tempo is synced up with the tempo of the song. So in a song like No Longer Slaves, which we ended up cutting from our Sunday list, I was using a white and purple color scheme. So then in the bridge, you split the C so I could walk right through it. I used this purple movement scene that again was synced up with the tempo of the song to really seem like the stage was being split in half. And it's a really subtle thing, but again, it's just emphasizing what the song is trying to say thematically. Really, my greatest piece of advice when building lights for your worship sets is to really immerse yourself in the song. I spend a ton of time each week programming lights because it really is that important. I really pay attention to how the song makes me feel at each section, and then I use a lighting scene to match that feeling. And then the very final piece to making the most of our simple lighting design is its power in spontaneous moments. So during in rehearsal, I will sometimes add a repeated section of a song to Ableton that I think we may continue to play, like another bridge or chorus. Then after the song is done and the lights go down, we may continue playing and we can play for however long we want because of looping pads in Ableton Live. But as we start to build and go back into the bridge or chorus, I can cue that in Ableton and everything comes back up on the downbeat. A volunteer running lights can't possibly be perfectly on time and the lights coming back up, slides changing on their own, these things really add to the effect of these moments. And if Jake decides to just pray and we don't really feel it necessary to continue building, the lights just stay where they are and we go into our next transition. And this is all under my control because of Light Key and Ableton Live. Remember that we are meant to shepherd the congregation and we should really be doing it in a way that prevents distraction. The ultimate goal at the end of the day is for people to connect with God. But that's really it. That is how I make the most out of a very simple lighting design. We don't have all this crazy gear and we have broke the budget to get our system. Using the power of software like LightKey and Ableton Live is really what makes our lights shine, literally and figuratively. For a complete rundown of all the lighting gear and software we use at our church, download our worship ministry toolkit, which is linked down below this video. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, well, be sure to leave a like and share it with your friends in worship ministry. You can check out more related content right over there. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.